This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be exploring four kinds of comprehensions that we can use in Python, starting with list comprehensions. And if it's your first time, do not worry, I'm going to explain it in as simple terms as possible. But to get started, let's create a list of names, which will be of type string. And that's going to equal Bob, Luigi, James, and Anna. Now suppose you want to create a new list that only contains names that are longer than four characters. Well, usually you would create a new list by typing in whatever variable name you want. And that's going to be a list of type string. And we're going to initialize it as an empty list. Then for name in names, what we can do is check if the length of name is more than four, then we can append it to the new list. So long names dot append and pass in that name. Now, when we print this, what we're going to get back are the names that are longer than four characters. And that's going to be Luigi and James. And there's nothing wrong with this per se. It's quite legible and easy to edit, which is usually what you're after when you're programming in Python. But what if I told you there was an easier way to do this while maintaining readability? So let's move on to the second approach, which uses list comprehensions. And I'm going to keep this approach here just so you can see the difference. So I'm just going to comment that out. And right below, what we're going to do is create the same variable, long names, which will be a list of type string. And here we're going to get started with our list comprehension. And what we want to do is return the name for name in names if the length of the name is greater than four. And that's the wrong way to do that because that has to be outside. And this is the syntax that we will be using to replace what we had from earlier. Now, if we save and run the file, you'll see that we're going to get the exact same output, except this time we managed to do it all in one line. And what's really nice about list comprehensions is that you're not required to assign it to a variable. You can easily delete this entire line and just print the result. So we want to print the name for name in names if the length of name is more than four or greater than four, and we'll get the exact same result. But going back to what we had earlier, let me try to explain this in a bit more detail because all I did was write name for name in names if the length of name is greater than four. But how does this translate to this over here? Well, for starters, when we are creating a list comprehension, we always start with what we want to return. So name is what's going to be appended to the list. And then we initiate the for loop. So for name in names. So I'm just going to tap on enter and add tab a few more times to make this easier to read. So as you can see, we're returning name and then we're checking for name in names, which is the same as the first line of our for loop. Then under that, we have the condition if length of name is greater than four. So here we can do something like this, tap on this four times. And you'll notice that this part here is going to mimic this part here perfectly. So the syntax for a list comprehension will always go as follows. What we want to return, the for loop and the condition. But let's go back to what we had earlier because list comprehensions in general are always going to be on one line. Otherwise, it kind of defeats the purpose of the list comprehension. Also, you are not required to add a condition to a list comprehension. You can safely remove that and just create it with this basic syntax. And since this is the variable that we're returning, we can also manipulate that. We can say name.upper, which means that once we iterate through all these names, it's also going to uppercase the result at the end of each iteration, adding the name uppercased. So now we can change this to upper names. And when we run this, instead of getting that filter from earlier, what we're going to get are all of the names from our list uppercased. And in a regular for loop, that's going to look something like this. For name in names, upper names dot append name dot upper. This syntax here is the equivalent to what we wrote down here. But as you can see, why would you ever use three lines of code when you can easily use a list comprehension to achieve the same result? It's just as clean and just as easy to read. So that's a perfect example of when you would replace a regular for loop with a list comprehension. Next, I'm going to show you one more example before we move on to the other comprehension types. So in this example, we're going to create some numbers of list of type integer. That's going to equal one, two, three, four, and five. Then we're going to create another list of integer 
and this is going to contain a list comprehension. And we're going to start off with the built-in power function, which calculates the power of any given number. So here we can pass in the number and the exponent, which will be two. Four number in numbers. Then we can print the squared numbers. And what we're going to get as a result is each one of these numbers being squared. And again, you can optionally include a condition such as if number is more than two. So that will apply this condition to each iteration before giving you back the result, which means that if we were to run this, what we're going to get back is 9, 16, and 25, because both of these did not satisfy this condition. But now that we understand how list comprehensions work, we can move on to other comprehension types, such as generator comprehensions, dictionary comprehensions, and set comprehensions. So now what we're going to do next is create a generator comprehension. And for this example, I'm going to import from typing the generator type, since I like to use types when I'm programming in Python. Next, I'm going to create some data, which is going to be of type range. And that's going to equal a range of 10,000 numbers. And once again, I want to create a comprehension that squares each one of these numbers. But doing that with a list would be quite a waste because it's going to load everything into memory immediately, which can be considered a quite expensive operation. So in this case, it would be much better to use an iterator or a generator. So here we're going to type in squared of type generator, and all it's going to do is yield an integer. It's not going to accept anything, and it's not going to return anything. Then we're going to open up a pair of parentheses and use the pow function once again. And we're going to insert n and two for n in the data. And just like that, we created a generator comprehension. The only thing we did differently here is add a pair of parentheses instead of a pair of square brackets, which means now if we were to print squared, what we're going to get back is a generator object, which is much more memory efficient because we can only get data back if we request it. And what I mean by that is that we need to explicitly call next or iterate through this generator object to get the information back. So the next of squared is going to give us back the first number. If we duplicate that several times, I don't know, maybe this is around seven times and we run the script, you're going to notice that it's going to give us 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36. But it's only giving us the values back as we request it. And since we're performing this operation 10,000 times, it's much better that we get that information back only when we request it. Otherwise, if we were to just get rid of all of this and change this to square brackets, this is going to return to us a list of integer. And it's going to be a huge waste because it's loading all of that information into memory. So if you have a lot of data, this can easily slow down your script. So once again, to create a generator comprehension, you just need to swap out the square brackets with parentheses. Up next, we have set comprehensions. And these are actually quite easy to use. Now that we've covered how list comprehensions work and how generator comprehensions work, set comprehensions and dictionary comprehensions are going to be incredibly simple to understand. So here we have some values of list of type integer, and that's going to equal 5, 5, 5, 11, 11, 5, 20, 30, 30, 5, 11, 2, 2, and 100. Can you believe that I used my imagination to generate all those numbers? It's insane. Especially since I have this AI assistant built into Z. Hello, mate. No. And then we'll just close that. But now that we have our data, what we're going to do next is create something called filtered. And that's going to be a set of type integer. Now here to create a set comprehension, we just need to open up a pair of curly brackets. And we can type in value for value in values. And just like that, we would convert this into a set. I mean, if we were to print the filtered values, what we're going to get back is this set over here. But this could easily be replaced for the set method. So that was quite a waste. But once again, we can manipulate these values at any point of the set comprehension. For example, we can also type in if the value is more than 10 and if the value modulus two is equal to zero. So now we're only accepting values that are greater than 10 and that are even. 11 is not going to be included anymore, which means the next time we run this, we're going to get 100, 20, and 30. Alternatively, I'm just going to remove this so we have some more space, but you can always manipulate the value that you're returning. 
So we can multiply v by 2, for example. And when we run this, we're going to get all the unique values back, and we're going to multiply those by 2. And finally, let's cover dictionary comprehensions. So to get started, we're going to create some data of type list, of tuple, of string to integer. And that's going to look like this. So here we have a list that contains a tuple with a string and an integer. And that's all this type annotation is saying. Then we're going to include b with 2 and c with 3. I'm so bad at manually typing this. But there we go. Finally, let's create that dictionary comprehension by typing in my dictionary of type dictionary of string to integer. And we're going to open up the curly brackets once again. But this time we need to be sure to set a key and a value pair as the return. So k and v for k comma v in the data. And then we can print this dictionary. And that's going to create a dictionary comprehension. But once again, in its current state, we could have just used the inbuilt dictionary constructor. So if you ever want to use a dictionary comprehension, make sure you're actually doing something in it. Otherwise, it's just a waste of space. For example, maybe you want to multiply the value by 10. I don't know why you would do that, but just imagine that's something you want to do to the value. Now, when you run this, it's going to loop through the data and it's going to multiply the value by 10 for each one of the keys. Otherwise, you can even uppercase the key if that's what you want, and it's going to apply those changes to your dictionary. So my recommendation is that you only use comprehensions if you know that you have to apply some simple functionality to the data. Another example could be hashing each key and using that as a new key. So for example, what we're going to do is add some parentheses to k and call hash. Now we're just going to remove times 10, so we have some more space. And now when we run this, we're going to get the hash and the value of each dictionary item. So as you can see, comprehensions are incredibly useful in Python. And getting comfortable with them is vital to coding efficiently in Python. I mean, you can easily program in Python without them, but it's just a major convenience. And once you learn how they work, you're going to be very thankful for them. Anyway, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. So do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any other questions regarding list comprehensions, set comprehensions, generator comprehensions, or even dictionary comprehensions, and I'll do my best to answer them. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.